Welcome again friends and this particular video we will be talking about the Sanger metho method of DNA sequencing. Now DNA sequencing method developed by Nobel laureate Fred Sangers or Frederick Sanger was the method used to sequence the genomes for Homo sapiens and a variety of other organisms. Now Homo sapiens remind this, uh, this is us right human being. In these huge projects, the target DNA from human, fish, dog, etc. is broken up into small pieces and packed into small loops of bacterial DNA known as plasmid. As the bacterial cells grow and divide, they replicate the plasmid, which is here uh, act as a target. Now this target DNA will be uh, replicated as well as their own DNA is replicated in the bacterial cells. In preparation of sequencing, the plasmid containing the target DNA must be separated from the rest of the bacterial cells. R robots and detergent to break open the bacterial cell and release the DNA. The samples are placed in centrifuge to spin. This process gathers the heavy components uh, of the cell at the bottom of the tube. Only the plasmid DNA contain, uh, carrying out the target sequence is left in the solution. This plasmid DNA is filtered and washed to further purify the sample. The solution containing the plasmid with the target DNA sequence is transferred to another type of plates. All of these things nowadays are done by robotics. And the chemicals required to start the sequencing reaction are also added during this time. The sequencing mixture of plasmid and target DNA, DNA nucleotides and fluorescently labeled or modified nucleotides. Enzymes and primer sequences to get the reaction started is then put onto the heating blocks. So remember what are put? Plasmid DNA. Nucleotide sequences that are required here is the DNTPs because deoxyribonucleotide sequences are needed. Then the primers and also enzymes are provided and some fluorescently labeled modified nucleotides are also supplied. Let us see how these ingredients combine in the Sanger reaction. The reaction is in initiated at the either of the end of the target DNA, whether it joins with the plasmid DNA. It, it's easier to see the action if we show the DNA unwound, right? So let us consider the DNA at its unwounding state. First, the DNA is heated so that its two DNA strands start to separate. And this is done by increasing the temperature to 96 degrees Celsius. The temperature is then lowered so that the short length of the DNA sequence, which is called a primer, that is complementary to the known plasmid DNA sequence can bind to it. Now for this we need to lower down the temperature to 50 degrees Celsius. Finally the temperature is raised slightly to enable the enzyme to bind to the short section of the double stranded DNA. Now the, the enzyme that starts to make a new strand of the DNA by incorporating free nucleotides that are a, a complementary to the target DNA. Now for this we must slightly raise the temperature from 50 degrees Celsius to 60 to 65 degrees Celsius. The enzyme will continue to extend the strands until it randomly incorporates a fluorescently labeled nucleotide. The fluorescently labeled nucleotides are chemically altered so that they terminate the DNA sequence or they terminate the DNA strand synthesis and the enzyme falls away. The cycle of heating and cooling is repeated many times generating a large number of fragments of different lengths that end in fluorescently leveled bases. For example here it is end at this point. In previous case it was extended at this point. Now in this case also it will be extended into some other point. So what we are getting here we are getting the different DNA segments with, with different variable lengths. And at the end of each DNA segment here, single standard DNA segment, we are having a fluorescently labeled altered base. So it is going on and different types of populations are produced. 
At this stage, the fragments are floating freely in the many of the tiny tubes in a plate known as wells. To sort the fragments out by size and detect which bases have been added when, the plate is loaded into the sequencing machine. Inside the machine, the samples are transferred into the glass capillaries. where an electrical charge starts to negatively charge the DNA molecules through a gel matrix. As they move, the longer DNA fragments are show, slowed down more by the gel and the shorter fragments will, will uh, start to migrate further in this, in this run. So when all the DNA fragments from your sequencing reaction are run, through the capillaries, they are sorted by the size from the shortest to the largest. Shortest one is going to be the fastest one, largest one are going to be the slowest one. And a, and a lesser at the end of the capillaries is used to excite the final fluorescent basis which is recorded as a colored peak or a bar. So each time when it passes through uh, the cell sorter, it will measure the fluorescence e effectivity and it will give a peak or a bar. This process means that the fragments that incorporated fluorescent tags and terminated early will be read first. The laser can detect only the fluorescently leveled basis at the end of the each fragment. So remember, at the end of the each fragment, the presence of the fluorescent bases are very, very important and it's a key for the understanding of this Sanger sequencing concept. So each colored bar represents the final base of each strands of the DNA that was made in the sequencing reaction ordered from shortest to the longest. Capillary sequences can be used for many samples at a time. This output shows 96 samples or, or rows and can read the equivalent of 500 to 800 DNA letters from each sample. Now, this method has been used by scientists around the world to decode the DNA. From its inception in 1977 through the early days of studying single genes to the Human Genome Project and beyond, the Sanger method has undeprained our understanding of gene and genetics in health and diseases.